On the line here, we have Mark Shields, former commissioner of police. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. I'm really glad that you decided that you do this interview. Now, it's my pleasure. We understand what is going on in the country. Mm -hmm. um, the first question I want to ask you, what is it that you feel is the biggest hindrance to the movement of the police and the, the government against crime in Jamaica? The biggest hindrance? Yes. Well, you know what, man? You could you could speak for a, and, and write for hours on that because it really is a, a thing that you need to break down into sections. Um, and the hindrance takes all shapes and forms. I think, first and foremost, uh, the, the Jamaica Constabulary Force themselves, they have... A few very good people, very professional, very dedicated to what they do, but they still have an internal problem of corruption, point one and point two. There is still um, a critical mass of people within the organisation who do not wish to change, who police as if it's still 1970 or 1980, and despite giving every single aid, um, um, assurance, assistance, we still stuck where we were before. And I've noticed that on, on so many different levels, which I could expand on. Secondly, um, the government, at the moment, I think there is um, a new will to make things happen. Whether or not the zones of special operation work, we will have to see. Um, the state of emergency in St. James is another positive move, although it is perhaps disappointing that it didn't happen two years ago. So there are things that are beginning to happen. If you look at the murder rate in St. James since um, the state of emergency without trying to put anything on it, it has certainly reduced. And now we have to look at ways in which we can continue to chase those criminals off the streets, not just from St. James, but everywhere else. And you'll find that criminals that were in St. James are now being displaced to Hanover, Westmoreland and Clarendon and, and elsewhere. So we need to keep them in fear of us rather than the public, the people of Jamaica, the good people of Jamaica being in fear of the criminals. And I think we, we can do that. So in answer to your question, it's, it's very broad. We also have to look at ourselves. We have to look at our own behavior. You and I both drive on the streets of Jamaica and we see the recklessness. We see the lawlessness all yeah. of the time. People jump in red lights going the wrong way up roads, doing everything that they can not to obey the law. And we somehow have to create a society like it is in other places where people do as they're told, people obey laws. Because my strong belief is that if you can take control of the streets um, and have some sense of order, then there's less likelihood to be the serious law of lawlessness that we see in places in Jamaica. The, 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 the reoccurring argument about corruption in the police force. Remember Dr. Carl Williams mentioned his disappointment in not being able to curb that. We just spoke mm -hmm. to a former assistant commissioner um, Trinity Keith Gardner about and he mentioned the corruption and now mm -hmm. we hear you in that it, 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 it would appear to me that it has been there forever. When you were farm, when you was the commissioner of police mm -hmm. Was it dear to the, the, the point where now that we hear everybody talking about it, or is just something just starting to happen now? Because we hear no. a lot of police getting old for different... I don't, think, I don't think there was sufficient... Uh, and it's with respect to all of my colleagues, I do not think that there was sufficient will and courage to move against some of these corrupt individuals. But in defence of them, I do not think that the way that the rules within the Jamaica Constabulary Act are set up, that it's very easy to get rid of people. What I can tell you is that when I was Deputy Commissioner of Police, I saw the intelligence. I read about some of the extremely bad cops that were within the organisation that I actually had to work with. But the problem that you have is moving from having the intelligence to constructing a proper investigation, prosecution, and subsequent conviction is a, is, a, is a huge amount of work. And quite often these people are very sophisticated and extremely difficult to catch. 
So I would prefer a system whereby if we have the intelligence that the government and legislators would allow us to have a system whereby we could retire people in the public interest. Because sometimes I'd rather just not have them in the force and, and even pay some money to get rid of them and clean up the force because in that way we can move forward. Whilst they stay, we have no chance of actually securing the trust and confidence of the people. All right, we we'll say that in the comments coming under fire by the two men, the opposition leader and the, the prime minister. What what you think is is is, is the role of in the coming all of this, given that they were there to to really deal with certain human rights against the citizens by the police. But now we see that they are also coming under fire by the two main main gentlemen them in a in a in a in a Jamaica. Well, first of all, you and I were talking about corruption and if we just stick with corruption for a minute, we've now got MOCA the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency, which, as you know, Parliament has just passed that it will be a completely separate, independent organization to the police, to the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and they will be targeting corruption, which is what you and I were talking about. Yeah. So that's one thing. And I think that's an extremely positive move that this government has managed to get that legislation through. In relation to Indicom itself, I do not understand the, uh, the concerns about whether it's politicians or certain police officers. I do not understand it. There is, a, a legisla a, there is legislation in place for Indicom, and there are rules upon which they can be engaged. In fact, if you look at the front page of the, um, of the Gleaner today, and I think the Observer, where uh, the Honourable Peter Phillips, the opposition leader, said that Indicom were taking guns off police officers on the street on the just street. after yes. shootings, yes. you also saw that Terence Williams said that's absolutely not the case, that yes. there is a procedure. The Indicom themselves don't take weapons from police anyway. It's the police that do that. And secondly, they're taken to a police station yes. where it is done discreetly. So there can be this misinformation from various quarters at times, which I think is unhelpful. The reality is that every single civilized country has an organization like Indicom that is there to independently investigate the police. Oh, yeah. That's what you have. Mm. And we need to face the fact that Indicom is not going to go away, that the law is there, and it's there to protect the civilians, and it's also there to protect the, the innocent police officers, because I think um, it was um, Minister Montague who said just a few days ago, yeah. of all of those investigations conducted by Indicom, a very few, very small percentage actually ended up with prosecutions. Yes. But you still have to go through the process of investigation, mm. because if you don't have investigation, then you can get miscarriages of justice. So what, what do you think is the, all right, the, the Prime Minister mentioned balance. Oh, what is your interpretation of the Prime Minister talking about the need some balance in, in the com? I didn't hear exactly what the Prime Minister said, but my view on balance is very simply this. Indicom are bound by certain rules and regulations that are set down in law in terms of how they can proceed. I do not have any knowledge or evidence of Indicom breaking that breach or breaching that uh, in any shape or form. If they have, then those matters would be investigated. Um, I do not think that there is, it's on one side or the other. I just think that there is a, a general resistance, uh, that this attitude that some police officers are literally laying down their weapons because they're concerned about Indicom. I would say, police officer, you have nothing to be frightened of. If you do your job and you use sufficient um, force that is relevant to that particular occasion, and if you defend yourself and you defend your citizens, then you have no fear from anybody at all. But, on the other hand, if you think that you can go out there and target people who you think are criminals and kill them and plant firearms on them, I have absolutely no sympathy for you at all. That's how I would say it. If, if you were the commissioner of police today, what would Deputy be... commissioner. Eh? Yes. No, no, today. If you were the commissioner of oh. police today... Yes. What would be your first move now, given the well, situation that we find ourselves in Jamaica? Well, th there's about there's quite a few things I would do if I was commissioner of police. But I think the first 
the first thing I would do immediately is to look at the strength of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and I would get anybody at all that was behind a desk that was fit to be on the streets and I would get as many people on the streets as possible. Everything that's happening in St. James that is successful at the moment and the things that have happened that are successful in the zone for special, special operations is because there is high, visit, high visibility policing yes. and there's a, a presence of soldiers. So the first thing I would do is to review the strength of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and I would order every single person who sits behind a desk conducting an administrative role to get on the streets and to be visible. Mm. I don't care if they're not the greatest police officers in the world, but I need them on the streets. I need to ensure that when you and I drive home and we go through, say, halfway tree, that we're not going to jump the lights, we're not going to cut up the, uh, the right-hand lane, we're not going to do all those other bad things because there's going to be a police officer everywhere to control the streets. We need to take control of the streets. We need to make citizens feel safe and secure. That's the first thing that I would do. Secondly, I would have absolute zero tolerance to anything to do with traffic infractions, people dropping garbage on the streets, men urinating on fences at the side of the streets, any of those small crimes that are being committed that everyone turns a blind eye to, motorcyclists riding without crash helmets, you name it. If you're on the streets and you commit an offence, you will get a ticket or you will be arrested. So that will be my second thing. And the third thing is that I would establish permanent checkpoints, police checkpoints around major cities with proper concrete structures, with CCTV, with license plate reading systems upon them so that criminals fear going to any city because they know they're going to be watched. So they're just three or four things. I could go on if you have more time. Yeah. No, we have time. We have time. You can't, you can't talk. We have time. Well, next, if you really want to know, um, in the first month, I would interview every single senior officer in the force and I would decide for myself based on the intelligence and based on my interview whether or not I think they are fit for purpose and I would make some tough decisions and I would focus on building a strong, trustworthy, reliable top team and I would get rid of anyone that I did not feel would fit that bill and I would either give them a project to do or if I could get rid of them in the public interest. And the, I would then, with that, identify the top ten, top ten highly potential officers, high potential officers, and I would ensure that they go off to Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States for extended periods of secondment, in order that they could learn the strategic skills that are required to run a modern police service. Yeah. And I would bring them back and hope that at least one or two of them would be the natural successes to be the next internal commissioner of police. All right, we have a fork in the road here, and given where we are, we know. I mean, take yourself out of it as being a commissioner. We need a commissioner now. Mm -hmm. You give credence to the idea that we should seek for a commissioner outside of Jamaica? Well, no, there's a big difference. Outside Jamaica or outside the Jamaican Constabulary Force, which are you talking no, about? No, outside of Jamaica. If you, you, you could, like, you came here and the other... Mr. Green um, from England, who was here a yeah. couple, couple of years ago, you uh -huh. think that Jamaica right now reached a stage now where we need to get someone more experienced, more understanding of crime fighting in a, in a volatile situation? Like, for instance, England. Can I remember that them did? Let the ban and gun in England. Yes. Yeah. But now we see. People are use knife killing every day. When I'm a bridge in call me and say, "Why well, appear exactly. knife killing are going on in England?" But in I, I think we can handle knife quicker than gun. But it does. Yeah, you mm -hmm. think you think it it, it it is necessary? Or you give credence to the idea that why well, Jamaica? Right. It look like every time we get a commission right now working, you know, we need to get out, I want somebody outside. What do you think? Well, well let me let me put it this way. I'm going to give you an analogy with 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 Grace Kennedy. Grace Kennedy is a well respected. Jamaica grown company. Okay? You accept that? Yes. Grace Kennedy is a well respected yes. company. Grace Kennedy has grown exponentially over the years to become an internationally recognized company and they export their goods to um, the United Kingdom and the United States. Mm -hmm. And they also have a lot of services. 
Now, you're going to be thinking, where's Mark Shields going with this? This is where I'm going with it. The reason for the success of Grace, of Grace Kennedy is because they have been able to recruit people from outside Grace Kennedy. If everybody joined Grace Kennedy at 18, 19, 20 years old, and the only way you could be in Grace Kennedy is if you started on the shop floor and worked your way up to become the CEO, I can guarantee that Grace Kennedy would not be the great company it is. Like any company that is successful, it draws on people from other areas, whether they're Jamaican from within Jamaica or whether they're from outside that country. That's why Digicel is successful. That's why Grace Kennedy and many other companies are successful because of that. If you have an organization like the JCS that only ever recruits people from within inside the JCS, it is a recipe for disaster. I regret that after Les Green left and after I left, that for whatever reason, they stopped the whole notion of international police officers. Mm. They stopped so many things. They stopped the major investigation task force. They have not done as much with intelligence. There are so many things that, that we actually start here that are quite good, and then after a couple of years, we give it up. So the answer to your question is yes, I would take not only a commissioner, but deputy commissioners and assistant commissioners from elsewhere, but at the same time, as I said in my plan, I would be training local Jamaican senior officers to go and work abroad to gain the experience in the same way that if you work for Grace Kennedy, you can leave and go and work in New York or, or Miami for a yes, few years yes. and then come back with all that experience back to Grace Kennedy and make the organization great. So that's my analogy. I don't know what you think about that idea. Uh, I think, it, I think right. it's important. I had a suggestion, and I, was, I suggested continuously on this program, that the Ministry of Security and, and should really send or carry a group of police soldiers whatsoever and carry them to countries that has had worse crime than Jamaica and has gotten out of it. You know, there are many countries. I mean, all right, even think about New York itself. There was a time when mm -hmm. people feared for what in New York City with almost yep. 10 million people. And we see right now, 300 murder for one year is, is like for 10 million people. That is really something else. Yeah, exactly. Now, now I am feeling point. that what should, I, what should take place is that countries that we see that had a high crime rate for, for whatever mm -hmm. reason or not, these are the mm -hmm. countries that these police soldiers and the ministry should go to and really get a good hands and understanding of what is it that was done to alleviate that problem and exactly. carry it back to Jamaica. Exactly. I don't know. I mean, you and know. it isn't, but you know what? It's not just about the crime fighting side because you and I are talking mainly about crime fighting, but it's actually about going to um, NYPD or the Met Police in London and looking at how they run the organization. How do you make strategic plans and how do you make strategic decisions? Yeah. How do you manage a large public sector organization? Because all of that's very important as well. And when you look at the Jamaican Stabby Force and the way it's managed, it hasn't changed for so many years. And it's those things. And so if you can't bring people in all of the time because the local force is not prepared to listen or think they know best, then send them away. Send them to New York, Toronto and London in order that they can gather those excellent skills and bring them back yes. and preach to uh, to the people here for them. Well, Mr. Shields, I give thanks for you talking to me and um, I realise that you decide that this is your home now and you're quite okay here. And so I really say that <laughs> you, you, it, yeah. it don't jolt you a bit like you, like you are a roadway like some away. So, yeah, man, give thanks. Thank you, man. Thank yeah, you man. for inviting me on to your show. Thank yeah, you. Yes. Yeah, that was... Mark Shield, former commissioner of police, giving his view.